Grace and peace in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth to the elect across the earth. We love y'all so much. Welcome back to the dinner table. I hope you got an appetite. I hope you're walking right so you digest the food properly. I hope you got a plate. I hope you got your word. I hope you got some paper. I hope you got a pen. Because even though this is a dinner table, it's a classroom setting, okay? Um, the dinner we're about to enjoy together is life changing. He has, Jesus has chefed up an amazing meal once again. Because as you know, he is not just the Lord of Lords. He is not just the King of Kings. He's the chef of all chefs. Can I get an amen? He's the king of the kitchen. Amen. And of course, I'm going to be your humble servant. I'm going to serve you the meal. All I ask is that you thank Christ, be grateful, pray for us. And of course, shout out to our partners. We love y'all and thank you for your prayers and support. Remember, Christ stands at the door of your heart and he knocks. If you let him in, he says he wants to have dinner with you. Amen. But if you're not living right, and for whatever reason you're watching this video, you know, if you want to digest a meal properly, you have to be living right in the spirit realm. Okay, so let's go ahead and wash our hands so we can enjoy this dinner. Amen. Father God, thank you for another meal. You said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Wash us in your holy blood, Lord. May we have the mind of Christ. May your word bless us and change us, convict us, correct us, encourage us, and be a light unto our feet. Destroy the powers of darkness that would try to hinder us from receiving this life-changing mes life message. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen. I'm really, I want to get straight into the message. Um, this is going to be, um, as you know, a lot of y'all seen the image of the beast has been revealed, right? What if I told you this is an even more important message? This is overcoming the image. Of, this one is called how to overcome the image of the beast and the divine nature of God. Amen. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of their testimony. Now, this one right here by far is one of my favorite. So I'm very excited about this. I, I'm telling you, you are in for a, a treat. I'm telling you, you are going to be amazed with the revelations that have been given. Okay, you got to remember something. Your number one passion should be to know Christ greater. I mean, so many Christians and people, they get so fascinated with exposed videos and all of this type. But wouldn't you want to know as much as you can about the one who you're going to stand before on a throne of judgment one day? I... I Like, let that sink in. You know what I mean? Like, don't get distracted. It's good to know, you know, expose videos about the enemy so you can be aware. But your number one passion has to be to know Christ greater. That's what Paul said, that I may know him. Amen. We are called to be manifested sons of God, male or female. So in this message, we're going to go through some in-depth mysteries thanks to Christ. We're going to show you how to overcome the image of the beast and refuse the antichrist. How we're going to be able to be changed and transformed. I want to talk about the nature of Adam and the nature of Christ. Now, there's three videos I want to recommend, okay? These three videos are literally life-changing messages and and that's how i know it ain't me when i watch some of the older messages that christ through me has preached i'm like lord i could never preach those messages without you <laughs> they're so like deep you know what i mean the scriptures that are brought together to be the, to the, be the foundation the mysteries that are revealed it can't come from man that's why we don't lift up men in this ministry. The only one lifted up is Jesus Christ of Nazareth to the glory of God the Father. 
Amen. So really appreciate y'all love the comments. So many of y'all eyes are opened. You're hungry right now. So I'm excited to give you this message. Without, with that being said, the reason I'm recommending these three videos, the return of Moses, that was recorded about three months ago. The ancient God of time travel. And the mysteries that unlocked Christ. Those three messages, you will never be the same after watching them. If you're a child of the king, you're living right and you pay attention and take it serious. I'm telling you, the word will change you. So please watch those three messages either before this one or after. Okay, now, I'm excited. The first place I want to go to is the mystery of Adam and Jesus. There are some amazing parallels in the word, okay? And like I said, when you watch those three videos, you're going to know what I'm talking about. Like the return of Moses, I, I show you through the scriptures that Jesus was the greater Moses, right? Jesus was the greater David. He even says, I'm the greater Jonah. Right? Because Jonah went into the belly of the fish. Jesus had to go into the heart of the earth or hell, right? Jesus said he was the greater Solomon. He said the greater Solomon is here. But he's also the greater Adam. Why is it time itself broke? How is it 2019 right now, saints? Why is it that time it why is it time itself had to start over when God came into the flesh? When the son of God came through the womb of the matrix of a virgin. Huh? We're going to get into those mysteries right now. I'm telling you. You're going to be very grateful. All right. And of course, thank you guys for real for your prayers, your support, living right. It's one thing to watch our videos. It's another to walk in, the, to walk in them. To obey the word. To live for Christ. Y'all that do that, digest the message. A lot of people that come to these dinner tables that just come for their ulterior motives, they eat the message, but they vomit it back up because they're not really loving Christ and they just have motives. So make sure your heart is right. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Oh, wait, I do have one announcement. Partners, I will be sending y'all a video message privately. You'll get the Vimeo link within a week. This message is called the Son of Righteousness. <laughs> Wait till you see the mysteries in that video, okay? So for y'all partners, you will be getting a message. If you're new to the channel and you want to get in the fight, um, go to our website, revelationsofjesuschrist.com. Commit to being a partner and get in the fight with us, y'all. We're in the last hour. The number one thing that qualifies you to be a partner is that you're in love with Jesus Christ and you're living for him. You're actually following after him, carrying your cross. That's the number one thing that qualifies you, okay? Now, y'all ready? Let's get it. First uh, Corinthians 15, 22. Let's go there right now. Oh, I love this mess. Lord, I love this message. 15, 22. Y'all ready? In Jesus' mighty name. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. This is a direct parallel. You notice there's a lot of parallels between our Savior Christ and men of the Old Testament. Remember in John, it says, um, it says, by the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. See, there's another parallel. I want you to pay attention. Whenever that happens, the Almighty is trying to tell you something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, with that being said, I want us to go to verse 45. So, same chapter, 45. And if I'm going too quick with the word, I'm sorry, y'all. I got a lot of scriptures to get into, and I don't want to make this the three-hour video, okay? It says, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Like, wait, what? The last Adam? Clearly, the last Adam is referred to as Jesus Christ. So, if his name is Jesus, why is he called Adam? Right? 
That's a legitimate question. If you're new in Christ and you know you're you're just starting to read your word, you're like, wait a minute, Paul. He's not Adam. He's Jesus. Well, one of the jobs for us to do in this ministry is to help you understand the word of God. You know, when we, you know, because we love the Lord Jesus Christ so much. And we want you to love him. We want you to know everything about Christ that you could possibly know. Think about what I'm saying. You should want to know his favorite color, his favorite food, what makes him laugh, what makes him angry. You know what I'm saying? Like, he should be your number one desire. Wow. So I promise you, by the end of this message, you're going to get an increase of appreciation for the Lord Jesus Christ. An increase of understanding of who he is. Because he's way beyond just the son of God. Amen. So, what does it mean? Let's read it again. The first Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. So it's comparing the literal Adam, right? That was made from the dust of the earth and God breathed into him. And the last Adam, which is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Well, look at it like this. Every child that came from Adam technically is the flesh of Adam, right? They're the body of Adam. And this is why bringing this message to, to really like bring it all together, right? So the image of the beast revealed, but now we're going to see how to overcome the image of the beast. So now this image of the beast, Adam's flesh, right? Because when you bring all the humans together, they form the body of Adam, right? We now are forming the body of Christ, Wait till you see these parallels. It's going to literally shock and amaze you. And if you're anything like me, I love the Lord so much. I just get so joyful to know these mysteries. Uh, if you wait till you see it, that's all I can say. Okay? Look at me. I put my hand on my face a lot. It's just something I do. I get so excited. I'm just like, oh, Lord. <laughs> I can't help it, y'all. Okay, I kind of hide in my hand like, oh, Lord, because he's just so amazing. You know, I used to wonder why I do that so much. And then in Revelation, it says that the angels of the Lord, they fly around Christ, but they're, they have six wings. Two they fly with, two they cover their face with, and two they cover their body with. Now, there's a mystery about that on one of my other messages that Christ gave, but Saints, if you ever see me do that, it's just because I, I, I get overwhelmed sometimes. When I do the walk away, like I, I just got to take a break for a minute. Just kind of walk over near the stove and come back to y'all. You know what I mean? So if you see me covering my face, I just got such a passion. I kind of just like, oh, Lord, how do I do this? And if you ever hear me say I can't do this, I don't mean it literally. I just mean for that moment, I can't handle the goodness of God. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> Some of y'all like words, man. Come on, bro. Like, you know the mystery already. Can I get it? Do I got to hear you talk? Like, yes, you do. You at my dinner table. Come on. You trying to rush a meal and go? What kind of family member are you? Huh? Now, here we go. Wait and see this. Y'all ready for it? The parallels of Adam and Jesus. The first Adam, the last Adam. Right? Didn't we just read that? Adam is called the son of God, lowercase s. Okay? Probably this one you could read on your own time in Luke chapter 3. It's the genealogy when it names all the genealogy. When it gets down to Adam, he's called the son of God. Right? Well, what is Jesus? The son of God. But what is the difference? Adam is the lowercase s, son of God. Jesus is the capital S, Son of God. And what I'm going to do to save time, instead of really going through all the scriptures like this, I'm going to put them on the screen, at least for this beginning part, okay? So, Adam is made the king of the earth, right? He was to rule the earth. Jesus Christ 
is coming back as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is going to rule the earth. Oh man, I'm telling you about you are in for a treat. Hallelujah. This is more like dessert. I'm gonna keep it real with you, Lord. You done made dessert, Jesus. He done made dessert. This, this is beyond dinner right here. So, Adam, lowercase s, Jesus, capital S. Both son of God, different levels, right? Adam made king of the earth. Jesus, the greatest king of the earth. Because remember, he's always the greater. He's the greater Moses, the greater Solomon, the greater Jonah, right? And when you watch the three videos that I recommended, you're going to have such a greater understanding if you come back and watch this again. I recommend even listening to these messages while you're cleaning the house or on the highway or in your bed. Because some of y'all don't have the time to listen to a full hour and a half message. Make the time. That's all I can say. Because we ain't a microwave ministry. Some of y'all want a McDonald's meal. Go see Creflo Dollar. Some of you want like a McDonald's meal. We're not the ministry for that. Okay. Now. Adam. Was. He was given the authority of the earth. To give every creature. A name. Right. He named all the creatures. Jesus Christ. Gives us. A new name, right? In the book of Revelation. <laughs> what if I told you that Adam wanted a wife? So God puts him to sleep. He pierces his side and takes out a rib. And from his rib, Adam is given his beautiful wife, Eve. Wow. I wonder what it was like for Adam to see his wife for the first time, huh? He was like, Lord, I got you. Anything you want done, it's, it's on. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Right? So Adam had to be put to sleep. His rib had to be pierced, his side. And from his rib, his bride was given to him. Are you ready for this? What would be the odds that Jesus Christ was put to sleep on the cross? Well, death, right? But watch the parallel. The guards, remember the Roman guards? Where did they pierce? They pierced his side and out came his bride. Did you hear this? Adam put to sleep. His side was pierced and from that God gave him his wife. Jesus Christ. We are the bride of Christ, are we not? But how did he receive us? He died on the cross or a form of being put to sleep like Adam. His side was pierced and God the Father gave him us, the bride. Like, <laughs> I think about this and I'm just like, Lord, this is phenomenal. So, breaking all of this down, let's recap it. Adam, lowercase son of God. Jesus, capital son of God. Adam, king of the earth. But he failed, right? See, all the men of the Old Testament in areas, they failed. But Jesus never failed as the greater Solomon. He never failed as the greater Moses. Never failed as the greater Jonah. Never failed as the last Adam or the greater Adam, right? He was perfect in every single attribute, in every single way. Like, I think it is, it just blows my mind. Man. But now I want to go to something else. We're going to bring the mystery together. I, I really don't have to make this message too long. I mean, I can, I'm trying to sum it all up. I want you to go to 2 Peter with me. Watch this. 2 Peter chapter 1. Take a walk with me. Are y'all loving this? I'm telling you, one of my favorite messages right here. 2 Peter chapter 1. Now, the whole chapter is just absolutely phenomenal. But we're going to go down to 3, moving down. It says, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. The key word here is divine power. 
But where I'm going is verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine what? Nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. What is the corruption? You see this right here? See this right here? This is the flesh of Adam. The one who turned against God in the garden. And was cursed, right? The, we, we, we learned that from the image of the beast being revealed, right? If you haven't seen that message, you definitely need to watch that, right? So he's talking about escaping this image of the beast, escaping this enemy called flesh, right? Because the word of God is always saying you need to walk in the spirit and not after the beast or after the flesh, right? Y'all... This is such a liberating message. You're going to be so blessed when we bring all this together. And of course, the prayer at the end. Amen. So we're bringing all this together. Let's talk about nature. What is the nature of anything? Okay. If you take a pig, right? Or a dog or whatever. We'll just say a pig. You bring that little cute little pig into your crib, into your house. You wash your pig, you know what I mean? Put some nice perfume on the pig, put a little bow tie, and feed the pig, you know, filet mignon and caviar, and play classical music around the pig, right? What's gonna happen the minute you leave your back kitchen door open? <laughs> Where are you gonna find Betty the pig, huh? Where are you going to find that little cute pig? Rolling around in the mud. Why? It's the nature of the pig. No matter how hard you try. Ah, yes, Lord. No matter how hard you try to make that pig something he or she is not. The nature of that pig is always going to override your commands. Always going to override your Rules that you lay upon that pig. You want that pig to be clean. But the nature of that pig. Is more powerful. Than what you want. In your will for that pig. So what if it really. Is a nature change. That we're after. What do I mean by this. As a follower of Christ. Right. Why do you not steal. Because the word of God tells me to, brother. I can't be stealing. I'm commanded not to steal. Why don't you commit fornication or adultery? Brother, that's a dumb question, man. Because the, the word of God tells me not to. Can I tell you something? That's not the answer I wanted to hear. Although it's true, we're commanded not to. But that shouldn't be the real main reason you don't steal. You don't murder. You don't lie. You don't commit adultery or fornication. What should be the number one reason you don't do these things? Because it, could, it, it should no longer be in your nature to do these things. You see the difference? How awesome is that revelation? What this means, brothers and sisters, for so many of y'all, the reason why you haven't overcome lust, pornea, depression, addiction, jealousy, unforgiveness, whatever it is, is because you were born with the nature of Adam, the nature of the beast. By nature, you would rather watch violence more than peace. That's why the wrong videos go viral. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> <laughs> on the low, brother, words is secretly calling. On the low, brother, words is secretly calling a whole lot of y'all, uh, you know what I'm saying, worldly and, and fleshy. And on the low, you kind of act like that swine that is desiring the viral videos of exposing darkness and all of these things. Yes, there's a time and a place for that. But it's a nature change, you see. But now you're like, well, okay, but how do I get that? I can't just snap my finger and become the nature of Christ because I was born with the nature of Adam, the nature of the beat. I told y'all this is it right here, didn't I? 
This video should go. This video right here should have double the amount of views than the uh, um the image of the beast revealed. Please help that. Send this video to as many as you can. Okay, it, this should be more important than the first video. Real talk. So you're like, okay, so I was born with the nature of Adam. By nature, I'd rather fornicate. Then live clean. By nature, I'd rather punch a guy in his face rather than try to tell him Jesus loves him. By nature, I'd rather steal than live an honest life, right? That's the nature of Adam. But, brother, words, I don't want the nature of Adam. I want the nature of Christ. Bro, please tell me how do I change my nature? Because there has to be a nature change, huh? Where do a lot of ministries mess up? You get invited to a ministry. You fill out a form. They make you a member. The pastor does a little prayer. Show off. Throw your head around like it's a mosh pit. You leave with a sore back. Right? And he tells you what? Okay. Now, you know what it means to be a Christian. Don't be stealing. Don't be killing. Don't be murdering. Don't have sex. Don't fornicate. Adultery. You know what I'm saying? Don't do none of those things. And we'll see you next Sunday at uh, 9 in the morning. Welcome to the ministry. You're a great member. First off, what that person does, they'll take that list of a million things not to do. And on their way home, he, the man or the woman sees somebody attractive. Immediately, they already broke one of the command, the rules, right? Oh, man, I'm still lusting. I thought I thought I had a come to Jesus moment. Like, wh what happened, right? Okay, boom. The man or woman turns the corner, accidentally knocked their toe on some kind of like, you know, uh, cement thing sticking out, hurt their toe. Ah, F this, boom, now they're cursing. And by the end of the week... They done broke so many of the commands and rules, they get so frustrated, they take the list, throw it away, right? They throw it away, and they never show back up to Sunday. I'm going to show you where that pastor or preacher went wrong. He's not wrong for telling them not to fornicate, not to steal, not to lie. Of course, we're commanded not to do these things. He went wrong. Because he didn't tell them about the nature change. I'm going to give y'all a parable. Y'all ready for it? If we were all outside together in the wintertime. Where it's snowing out. And it's like brick outside. Cold. And 20 feet away. Are a bunch of people around the big barrel. And then the fire is just blazing. And they're just joking, laughing, talking. They're nice and warm. By the fire. Let me ask you a question. The closer you get to the fire, the less what you are. The less cold you are, right? So the closer you draw to the fire, the less cold you are and the more warm you become, right? You're going to love this. Some of you are already catching it. The closer you draw to Jesus. I want you to imagine the cold as the world and the nature of Adam inside of you, that shivering, that cold Adam, that cold flesh, right? That's unable to love, it's unable to be honest, it's unable to be peaceful. The nature of flesh is wicked, right? Off in the distance, in the dark, you see this beautiful light shining from this fire burning. The closer you get to Christ, right? We'll picture him as the fire. The closer you get to Christ, the less Adam you are. Adam is the cold. Just like the closer you get to the fire, the less cold you are. The closer you get to the spiritual fire of Christ, or the presence of Christ, the Holy Ghost, the less Adam you are, and you start to take on the nature of Christ. Oh, man, that's so good. So, what the preacher is supposed to tell you is yes, brother, sister, you, you can't be living a life of sin. But I'm going to warn you. You have what they call sin nature in you. Your flesh is going to war against you every single day. And did you know the flesh has a mind? It's called the carnal mind. Your spirit has a mind. It's called the spirit of your mind, right? 
See, he's supposed to break this down, but these preachers, man, they come out of these cemetery seminaries and they don't have the relationship with Christ like they're supposed to. Now, there's some preachers that come out of there and they get the revelation and they get a relationship with Christ, but most of them just don't really know Christ. It's sad to say. But what he's supposed to tell them and what I'm telling y'all is you simply just got to get into the presence of Jesus Christ. You're going to make mistakes in the beginning of your walk. It's not a get out of jail free card for you to just wild out and sin. Paul said, should we sin that grace may abound? God forbid. No, no, you got to fight sin. Right? But just stay in the fire. Pray without ceasing. That's what, I, I, that's what I'm telling y'all to do. Live a life of prayer like you've never done before. Study the word. I don't care how busy your life is. That was the tactic of Satan coming through the Pharaoh to make the children of Israel so busy to, so they couldn't have time to meet God in the desert, remember? So don't tell me you're too busy. Make time. Pray and fast. Read your word on your lunch break. Get up earlier if you got to. Stay up later if you got to. Do what you got to do to increase your prayer life, your reading life. It, uh, for y'all that are partners in the ministry, y'all know that there's seven pillars that are in this ministry. Reading. Praying. Fasting. Praising. Meditating on the word. Worship. And fellowship. Those are the seven pillars, right? If you balance those in your life, right? And you're in the... Listen, when I first got saved, I'm telling you, some of y'all be like, words, how do you get so many revelations? I call it the three P's. Pain, persecution, passion. You can't just, I can't teach you how to have revelations. It has to come with experience. My love for Christ has been shown openly to God the Father. And how, and when he sees that I love his son, he gives me an increase of understanding and reveals mysteries about his son to me. Because I'm, I'm just keeping it real with you. That's our greatest passion in this ministry is to know Christ greater, to get closer to him, to get more of his presence. Everything else is secondary. Yeah, eventually we want to get land, want to get a building, want to um, have a building where people can fly in, stay for like a month, get trained up, filled with the Holy Ghost and sent off. But the main thing is Christ, right? What good is a building if you ain't got Christ ruling it? Come on, man. Come on. So, I'm telling you right now. You have to be in the fire. Until the nature of Adam comes off of you. And you're going to notice you're going to start. Re the divine nature is going to start growing in you. Remember what Paul said in his letter. That Christ is formed in us. The more you allow Christ to expand on the inside of you. He's pushing out the nature of the beast or the nature of Adam and he's replacing it with the divine nature. Oh, this is so good. You know, sometimes I'll be meditating on things. <laughs> It'll bug some of y'all out, but it's so deep though. How does puppies, right, or animals, let's say puppies, right? They come out of the womb of their mother and immediately go to her nipple for milk. How do they know? It's not like they had a class in the womb, you know, to, to teach them. All right, look, when y'all come out the womb, I want you to do a U-turn, take a left, and there's going to be some nipples hanging out. Get your milk from them. How do they know to go directly to the nipple? How does a baby turtle know to go uh, crawl through the sand to get to the water? What is this pre-given not? I can't do this right now. What is this pre-given knowledge? This is nature that's placed in them. So we have the pre-given knowledge of Adam and Eve. The knowledge of good and evil. This is the nature we inherited from Adam. So now Jesus Christ had to come to the earth as the last Adam. He had to finish Adam off at the cross. Remember what we talked about in revealing the image of the beast, right? Has been revealed. So now this is more like 
Okay, that video was adding and subtraction. This one is more like multiplication and division. We're getting deeper with it, right? We're breaking this down more so you can have a victorious walk with Christ and not be discouraged when you mess up, get bad thoughts. Listen, there's a video we have out called The Mental Megiddo. You should be writing these videos that I'm recommending you and watching them. The Mental Megiddo, all about the battle of the mind, right? And we talk about how just because you get just because you get an unclean thought does not mean it's you. Huh. Just watch the video, okay? But you're gonna notice now. I'll give you my own testimony. When I first got saved, right? When I would go to pray, when I would go to pray, my mind would wander. It would be hard for me to focus on Jesus. I'd be thinking of so many things, even like sexual thoughts of women. And I'm like, oh, like, Lord, I'm trying to pray to you. Like, what is this? But I kept it real with God. I said, Lord, you need to help me. What is this? Why? why what are these thoughts? Like, I'm trying to pray to you and I'm getting bombarded with these thoughts. But the more I stayed in the word, listen, this is not a normal book. This is more than just a historical, factual book. This book, <laughs> y'all ready for it? The cover of the word represents the flesh of the book, right? The pages represent the soul of the book. But the words represent the spirit of the book. <laughs> Oh, Lord, help me. Y'all hearing this? So, this book is supernatural. This is the only book when you read it, it is reading you. Remember, the Word of God says, faith comes by the hearing. The reading and the hearing of the Word. So, the more I read this, the more faith grows in me. And the more faith I receive, the more I believe Christ. It's all like... What would happen if a pregnant mother stopped eating? Would the baby stop growing? Absolutely. Die in the womb. There's another message called the womb of the gospel. One of the greatest uh, mysteries ever revealed. It's a very old video, but it's way ahead of its time. Thanks to Christ. Now, Christ is growing in us. The more you stay in the presence of Christ, and this is why Partners for Y'all Partners, the Son of Righteousness video is all about Christ as the light, right? S-U-N, <laughs> but not what you think. So I'm going to try my best to get that to you within the week, Lord willing. And we thank you, uh, y'all, that are in the fight with us. So as you're growing in Christ, you're changing in his presence. Wow. I'm going to give you one analogy that's in the Son of Righteousness video, and I'll give it to y'all publicly. If you go to the beach and you lay down, the longer you stay in the presence of that sunlight, what happens to you? Your body begins to change. The sun hitting you changes you. You get a suntan, or if you like me, man, you get hit up, man, I'll be looking... Like a tomato, man. You know, some of y'all be laughing at a brother, but hey, it's all good. Because when the red go away, I get tan. You know what I'm saying? But the reality of it is that sunlight changes you. What about in the spirit realm when you're in the prayer? Woo! When you're in that prayer closet. Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, make yourself a private place to pray, whether it's a back porch, whether it's a literal prayer closet, which I recommend, no matter what, find somewhere where you can get on your face and worship God without interruptions and pray over that place and say, Lord, this is my meeting place with you. And you be in that prayer closet, right? I want you to imagine that you're in there, you're worshiping God, you're praising Jesus, you're talking with him, you're singing songs to him. All the while, while you're in that presence of Christ, he's changing you. And he's putting his nature into you. So now, you're going to notice that your desires are starting to change. It's, it's not always an overnight thing. Some of, some of you get hit like Saul that became Paul. That was a, whoo, 
His thing was, his transformation and change was faster than the average. But for the average believer, it's a process, right? It's like a baby got to crawl, then they learn to walk, then they learn to run, then they learn to tear the crib up, you know what I'm saying? All your mothers is like, amen, right? But we change in the presence of Christ, right? And you're going to notice the more you pray, the more you worship, the seven pillars now, the more you read, you're going to notice that in the beginning, you weren't stealing because you knew you weren't supposed to. You weren't just lusting over every man or woman because you knew you weren't supposed to. But as you stay in the presence of Christ or in that fire where the cold can't change you, ah, Hey, come on, this is so good. That's why if you notice people that walk away from Christ, they walk away from the fire, the cold starts working on them to bring back the nature of Adam in them. That's why you got to stay in the presence of Christ at all times. That's why the Bible says stay in the ark because when the door shuts, it's too late, right? So the more you stay in his presence, you're going to notice that you're going to lose the appetite of the beast. Ah, that's so good. You're going to lose the desires you had. When you were in the beast, feeding off the beast. You're not going to want to fornicate. Not simply because you're told not to. It's no longer going to be your nature to do that. It's no longer my nature to punch you in your face. It's no longer my nature to want to sleep with another man's wife. It's no longer my nature to want to hate. Amen. Sister, amen, brother. So you're looking for the nature change. Yes, pay attention to the list. Thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not. You know what I mean? If you love me, keep my commands is what he said. We're not bound to the law, but we still can't just be bugging just because we got grace, right? God forbid. But now we know the mystery. I'm in the presence of Christ changing because I need a nature change. I want you to write this amazing mystery down. You ready for it? The Adam of Adam. The A-T-O-M of A-D-A-M. The Lord dropped it in my spirit about a month ago. And I was like, the Adam of Adam? What? Actually, it was more than a month ago. But an Adam, in the Greek, it can't be cut or separated anymore. It's the rawest... I can't even... How do I, how do I explain it? It's like when you magnify and you go down as deep as you can go into the DNA of man. When you get to the atom, you can no longer separate it. Okay, you see like this paper, right? I could keep breaking this little piece of paper, right? I could keep ripping it and ripping it and ripping it and ripping it, right? But eventually, I'm not going to be able to rip it anymore. I'm going to get to a place, and that's what CERN and the Hadron Collider, what they're really trying to do. <laughs> they're trying to break the atom of atom. Because they want to, they want to, <laughs> but see, Jesus already did it. He broke the Adam of Adam, huh, on the cross. Cern, you a day late and an hour short. <laughs> you know, so Jesus did something absolutely phenomenal on the cross that we about to get into in a minute. So now we're going through this nature change, right? I think it's safe to say we can start transitioning into the deeper, deeper parts of the message. Now, all through the word of God, we're commanded to be born again. We become new creatures, right? Write these down. 1 Peter 1.23, and I'll read it real quick. You just write it down, all right? It says in Jesus' name, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. You see that? Not of corruptible seed. What is that? The seed of Adam, the corrupt seed of the beast. So we're now born again into an incorruptible seed because Adam was, huh, should I do it yet? Okay, so let's write down a few more. Acts 2.38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, right? When they said, what, what, what must we do to be saved, right? I want you to write down 2 Corinthians 5.17. Come on. 2 Corinthians 5.17. I'm just going to read it. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. 
Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Isn't this amazing? Okay, I'm going to give you guys an analogy. I've given this at our conferences we do here in Atlanta a couple of times because it's such an amazing analogy. Wait one second. I want to get something. Hold on. So this CD right here, right? I know a lot of people don't use CDs anymore, but it's going to be a great analogy. This CD has a weight, right? If I put this CD on the scale, it'll weigh a certain amount of weight. But if I put thousands of songs on this CD, if I could, and I put 20 movies on this CD and 100,000 photos, and I put it back on the scale, would it weigh any more? No. Why? Because the songs and the videos, all of that, even though it's burned onto the CD, it's in another dimension. It's weightless. Oh, this is so good. So you as a body, right? Your flesh, it's, it's, it's measured in weight, right? But your spirit and your soul are in another dimension within your flesh. Uh, I hope you can catch this. Within your flesh, your flesh is like the outward of this CD, right? Your soul and spirit are like the, the songs and the photos and all of that. It's weightless. It's in another dimension onto the CD, right? Let me, let me say this is um, my Liquid Fire album, right? Let's just hypothetically say. When I sent off the album to get reproduced, right? I had to give them what you call the master copy. This means that this copy will be the copy that produces every single CD that's made. Let me ask you a question. 20 songs, let's say, right? What if on the way to the production company, uh, the CD production company, right? I accidentally scratched the master copy and I didn't know it. And the scratch made track three and four unplayable. Everything else was playable, but three and four, because of the scratch, it would skip. Have y'all, y'all remember CDs, right? When you would play a song and it would skip, you're like, man, what do you do? Skip over that song and play the other ones, right? I want you to imagine that this is Adam and the scratch represents the sin. When he sinned against God, he received a curse. No matter how many CDs are produced off of Adam, will they or will they not have that skipped song? So in other words, if the master copy has track three and four messed up because of the scratch, did you not know that every single CD I produce off of the master will have the same skip even though the scratch ain't on the CD? That one right there was really deep. And it should have been easy for you to understand. I'll say it one more time. The CD, if it got scratched in track two, uh, three and four were unable to be played. Even though I made other CDs from it that didn't have the scratch, the songs would still skip because the original skipped. That's what it's like with Adam. We received the curse. Even though we didn't bite of that fruit, it not really wasn't it wasn't really an apple, but that's a whole nother sermon. But not only did we didn't we didn't we didn't commit that sin in the garden. So why do we inherit the curse and receive that image of the beast? Why are we changed? Why do we have this evil nature? It's because Adam is the master copy. So what oh I love it, I love it, I love it. So why is Jesus called the last Adam? Well, God the Father said this. Hopefully, oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, this is so good. How perfect is this, Holy Ghost? I love you. Y'all ready for it? God the Father says, Son, we need to destroy the master CD called Adam. But the only way to do it is I need to send you as the last Adam. You're going to take on the same flesh of Adam through the womb of Mary as a virgin. And you're going to take this CD in about 30-ish years of your life. You're going to walk perfect. You're going to fulfill the law. But I'm going to allow you in the flesh a body prepared. 
you will have to die as the lamb of God. And you're going to take the flesh of Adam, the beast. Y'all ready for it? And you're going to allow man to be turned against you. Remember what Jesus said? He said, weep not. Don't weep for me. Weep for yourselves. If I wanted to, he said, I could call on the Father and angels will wipe out everything on the earth right now. Remember? But God says, son, you're going to take that master copy or the flesh of Adam and you're going to be ready for it and you're going to be nailed to the cross. And when you're nailed to the cross, man, these used to be able to, you're going to break the curse by breaking and destroying the flesh of Adam to the cross. And once, oh, this is such a good analogy. Oh, Lord, I love you. And once you allow the, the flesh or the master copy, that curse that got the scratch and the skipping tracks, which represents the nature of sin, right? Man can never overcome this. It was why they can never fulfill the law. Because that sin nature, that curse that the master copy picked up, no matter how many CDs were after that, Jesus had to break the master copy to the cross. And when he rose from the dead, he, was a, he started a new creation of children. He became the new Adam. He became a USB instead of a CD. Much more modern, a, a, a whole different way, much greater than a CD now, right? You can't scratch the... I can't, I can't. Lord. Jesus died as a seedy or as Adam. He destroyed Adam to the cross or the beast, the flesh. Right? And he rose from the dead something brand new. A USB. Way, a, way ahead of its time. I mean, this, this is on a whole nother level because that CD can only hold so much. This US, you get my analogy now. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And his flesh was changed. And we're about to get into that. Wow. I want you to go to John chapter 3. Well, right. Um, mm, let's go to John chapter 1 first. Wasn't that analogy amazing? How's your understanding right now of Christ? Aren't you just jumping off your chair at the dinner table right now? Like, I'm, look at me. I got CD fragments all over me. The things I do to feed y'all the word. Glory to Christ. Amen. I love y'all. So check this out. Right? Looking like litter everywhere. Go to the Gospel of John chapter 1. I want you to see how amazing this is. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It says in Jesus' mighty name. Now check this out. We're going to go down. Well, you already know. In the beginning was a word and the word was with God and the word was God. Right? And all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was the life. And the life was the light of men. The light shined in the darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. So the son of God. Was the living light from God the father. Put into a physical flesh body. But they couldn't understand or comprehend him. I can't get into that right now. It says. Verse 10, he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. Jesus created the world. I'll just let that sink in. But as many as received him, to them gave he power, excuse me, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the what? Sons of God. Even to them that believed on his name. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh. You see that? How does flesh have a will? You see that? Nor the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. This is, this is amazing. Now, what did Jesus say to Nicodemus? Go to chapter 3 now. Chapter 3 of the mighty gospel of John. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want y'all to see this now. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man could do these miracles except thou do them, except God be with him. I'm going to keep it real. There's a lot of y'all that a Nicodemus is to us. 
to Jesus in this ministry. You know, we've had a lot of them. Just let's have dinner table talk before we move forward. Because this is serious, what I'm about to say. We've been getting a lot of emails from people saying how they're convicted. They go to a, a regular congregation, a, a local church. But they, they admit that the pastor don't really care about them. They're not really being fed like Christ feeds them through this ministry. And they're getting convicted that they go above and beyond for that ministry. They tell people they're a part of that ministry. They support that ministry. But then they were secretly feeding off of this ministry, but not caring about helping this ministry be known, help this ministry financially. Don't be a Nicodemus where you secretly love Christ in this ministry, but you supporting other ministries that ain't really doing a whole lot for you. That ain't right. You better judge righteous. I'm telling you, judge righteous the ministries that you help go to the four ends of the earth. Now, if you don't believe we're really feeding you, if you don't believe that these messages that Christ gives through me is changing your life, then I love you. Fine, I'm not talking to you. But if you believe you are being changed and transformed by Christ in this ministry and you don't pray for us, you don't try to spread the messages. And if you're able to help and you don't help, I mean, come on. Well, what is that? This is supposed to be a reciprocal relationship. So stop being a Nicodemus. Okay, stop. I know some of y'all are like, man, where did that come from? Because it just hit me. Stop being a Nicodemus. Stop being quiet about knowing who this ministry is. You want to tell too many. Come on, man. Don't be creeping up in the night hour. Watching these videos when no one's around. Represent Christ. Represent the ministry. Amen. So what? I don't put on a... I got tie. I got a suit. You know what I mean? So what? I didn't go to a seminary. While men were going into seminaries to learn how to deceive you, I was in the Holy Ghost worshiping, studying my word. I was in Holy Ghost college. You know, mystery after mystery after mystery revealed to you from Christ through this ministry. How could it be mine? Has to be God with us. What man? can get this many revelations except God be with them don't you forget it that's why I always say I'm just a servant so you know I'm going to keep it real you needed that you know but for y'all that ain't ashamed of the true gospel and you ain't ashamed of real ministries because in reality it's because you know how bold we are and how much we expose the enemy and sometimes people that they ain't built right they kind of want to avoid like, eh, I secretly love this ministry, but I don't want to label myself with them because then the devils attack me. Then the Pharisees come at me. Now, nah, forget all that. Who cares? Stand for the real. Amen. Stand for Christ. Christ will stand for you. Now, let's go. It says Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou do except God be with him. All glory to Christ. Jesus answered and said unto him, Truly, truly, I say to thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Can you imagine that? So we know he can't be just talking about Born of the womb. That's why Nicodemus couldn't understand. He's like, how can a man be born again except he go back into his mother's womb? And he kind of joked about it. Those that are born of the flesh are of the flesh. Those that are born of the spirit are of the spirit. There was something Jesus Christ was telling Nicodemus. See, the reason why we love you, regardless if, if you really want to be a part of the ministry and help spread the messages and get in the fight with us, is because Jesus didn't rebuke Nicodemus. He still allowed him, even though he snuck to come see Jesus. So even you might just watch the messages, but you don't really care about helping the ministry. We love you. We still want you to come to the dinner table. But I want to show you something. Nicodemus ended up changing. And I believe he became a very powerful man of God, even though you don't hear too much about him in Acts or you don't hear too much about him uh, later on in life. But that man was changed, okay? I want to tell you that there was a mystery 
when I was meditating on this, I'm like, wow, Lord, like, you spoke to Nicodemus. He was, he must have been a very special man, even though he had a weakness and he didn't want to be seen with you. He knew you were of God. And you chose to tell him a deep revelation about being born again. Because look, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered and said, truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now you're about to get the deeper mystery. That which is born of Adam is Adam. You're going to get the nature of Adam, the mind of Adam, knowing good and evil, battling in the flesh like Adam. But those that are born of the spirit, which is Christ, is spirit. They're given a new nature, a new mind. A new, new attitude, a new character, a new body. Ah, this is so good. But what if I told you I was meditating and it just dropped in me. What does Nicodemus' name mean in the original language? Do you know the name Nicodemus means victory of the people? What would be the odds that as Jesus is speaking to this man on how to be born again, that Jesus would take Adam and allow the flesh to be crucified and destroyed so he could rise from the dead as a new man with different flesh, with a whole different body. And we're going to get into that in a minute. That's the grand finale. That is phenomenal. That when Jesus does die on the cross and rise from the dead, he would have the victory for the people. Jesus is the victory of the people. Wow. Wow. Okay, so we got a transition now. So we're talking about, we went through the parallels between Adam, the lowercase son of God, and Jesus, the last Adam, right? Who had to bring the flesh of Adam to be destroyed on the cross to do away with that cursed thing, that flesh. You might say, well, brother, there's still flesh and blood now. So if Adam was destroyed on the cross, why are we still in the flesh? Very good question. We're still born the CD or Adam, right? With the curse, with the skip. But when we give our life to Jesus Christ, who was the last Adam and was died and died and rose from the dead, a new Adam, right? Or a new creation, right? What happens is even though we're still in the sea, the, the flesh, the inside has been transformed, right? So we're no longer thinking like the CD. Remember, I compared the CD and the USB, when CDs were out, USBs, now people, it's now, it, check it out, USB, right? But now most people have cell phones that they play their music from. So it's going from one, one type of flesh to another type of flesh to another type of flesh. I mean, who knows where it's going to go a year from now, right? But we are changing. We are this inside of this now. I know it's real funny, but it's the best I could do, y'all. So we're this growing on the inside of this. So even though on the outside you still look like an Adam, you still look like you're from the, the seed of Adam, but you're not no more. Once you become saved and you're following after Christ, this is why you're asking to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Listen, let me tell you something. One of the most important things that you need to be doing right now is seeking for the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire, period, period. If you have not been filled with the Holy Ghost and fire, then that should be the number one thing you're doing right now is seeking for the mighty Holy Ghost to fill in you. Jesus gives you the Holy Ghost. So there's a transformation taking place, right? So we're, we're going through this now. I want you to go to Colossians with me, chapter 1. Come on, saints. We're going to be, I got to bring all this together now. Chapter 1. Look at what it says. Verse 
13 going down. Who hath now, no, 12, given things unto God the Father, which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who had delivered us from the powers of darkness, excuse me, from the power of darkness, and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So there's a translation going on. We went from being the flesh in darkness to being in Christ, in the light, in the kingdom of Christ, right? It says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Remember, they overcame by the what? Blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Who is the image of the invisible God. This is Christ now. The firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven. I can't even do this right now. When Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the dead, he came back as something different. Even though he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, his flesh, <laughs> we about to get into that in a minute. He came as a, what did I say to you in Corinthians? What did I read to you? Let's go back there. Let's go back to Corinthians. Hold on. Corinthians 15, 22. Um, it says, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. So with Adam, he gave that, that you know, the scratch on the CD. Death. That's all we got from Adam. But Jesus Christ, he is the Adam that gives us life. Right? Now, where I want you to go is 45 again. As it is written, the first Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickened spirit. Let that, let that really sink in. So Adam, flesh, made a soul. Remember what Paul said? That earthly, sensual, devilish. So the senses are linked to the soul. A lot of Christians never make it into the spirit realm. They usually stay in the soulless realm. That's why they do the drums and dancing in the tongues and they're showing off hats and clothes. They're in the flesh and they're in the soul. They like to see and the hearing and the touching and the tasting, right? Whose God is their belly. You got to get into the spirit. That's where the holy of holies is. You have the outer court, inner court, holy of holies. You have the flesh, the soul, the spirit. Adam was made a quick, uh, 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 a living soul. Jesus was made a quickened spirit. Let that sink in. What would be the odds that in Hebrews 4, if we go there now, watch this. Hebrews 4, it says in verse 12, For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. We could just pause right there. Why would the word of God, ah, come on. Why would the word of God, which is fast and powerful, why would the word of God, which is alive and powerful, even be mentioned of cutting apart and separating the soul from the spirit? Could it be the separation from Adam and Christ? So you're not lukewarm. You're not mixed. One day you're like, ah, oh, that's so good. One day you're like Adam, all in the soulless realm and the flesh. You know what I mean? You're sinning all day long. And then the next day on Sunday, you're in the spirit. Oh, Lord, hallelujah, shandadaya. Right? No. You need to be in the spirit. Governing over the soul and the flesh. The spirit has to rule over the soul and the flesh. I'm going to leave that. That's another message. But Adam was made a living soul, Jesus a quickened spirit. So clearly, there's a revelation here that we need to catch. Because God in Genesis 2, verse 7, I believe, it says he breathed into Adam the breath of life. And Adam became a living soul. But what would be the odds in John 20? Go to John chapter 20, the gospel of John chapter 20. 
Look at what it says, though. This, this one right here is going to amaze you. John chapter 20. Jesus was showing him he's actually the creator. Watch this. Chapter 20. And when he had said unto them, um, hold on. And when he had so said, he showed unto him his hands and his side where the disciples, then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them, peace be unto you as my father has sent me. Even so, send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive you the Holy Ghost. Did you catch it? Did you catch it? God breathed onto Adam and he became a living soul. Jesus breathed. He breathed on his children. Ah, you caught it. He breathed on the disciples. And they received his breath. But instead of a living soul, they became something. They became a quickened spirit. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. This is overload. This is overload, y'all. Overload. Acts 17, 28 says we are his offspring, right? That's a whole nother, nother message. But now we got to go deeper with it. But let's recap, though. We've seen all the parallels of Adam, the son of God, and Jesus, the great son of God. How he was king, Jesus is king of kings. Adam gave the names, Jesus will give the names. Adam ruled the earth but failed. Jesus is going to rule the earth but never fail. Adam... His side was pierced and out came Eve. Jesus' side was pierced and out came us. We are his bride, right? And the list goes on and on and on. But why did Jesus say in John 19, go there, go there real quick. We already in John 19. Uh, I want to say 28. No, no, no. Just, just go to uh, 30. And when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Well, hold on a minute. What was finished? I mean, what exactly did Jesus finish off at the cross? Adam, the nature of the beast, the curse of man, that nature of sin. He walked perfect on the earth. He fulfilled the law, right? It's called the law of sin and death. And because Adam died. You understand? When he ate that forbidden fruit, which we're going to get into another day, he received death. You see, he, he received the nature of sin. He was literally infected. Sin is an actual pathogen that's in the DNA of Adam. Woo! Right? Jesus finished off Adam at the cross. We receive the divine nature. So now, sister, brother, I know you get frustrated. You're like, man, why can't I quit the weed? Why can't I quit the cigarettes? Why am I still unforgiving? Why am I still lusting? I give up. No, don't give up. Get deeper into the present. Spend more time in prayer. I don't care if you, you, you don't, well, brother, I don't know how to pray. Jesus will teach you how to pray. Just go in his presence and worship him. I don't know what to say. You don't got to say a whole lot. Just say, Jesus Christ, I worship you to the glory of God the Father. Jesus Christ, I worship you to the glory of God the Father. Let's just say that for an hour. Worship him. Compliment him. Learn from David in the Psalms. David was a romantic. He, he loved the way he would compliment God. Speak to Christ. Pray in the Holy Ghost. How do I do that? Just get by faith in your prayer closet and say, Holy Ghost, I love you. I don't want to sin. I don't want to grieve you. Lord, wash me in your blood. Give me the divine nature right now. Lord, I want to pray in the Holy Ghost. And just speak to God the Father in the Holy Ghost through the Son. Wow. Learn to read your word. My camera about to die. I'm going to have to get the other battery. It's technology, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Learn to read your word. 
learn to stop. Your mind's going to try to wander. That's called the mind of the flesh, the carnal mind. You have the carnal mind, which is from the flesh. Then you got the spirit mind from the spirit. Cast those thoughts down and stay focused. Stay focused. Just read. Keep reading. Okay? And the more you read, the more you pray, the more you worship. Fasting is important too. Because fasting is binding up and, and bringing down the beast. You see? Guess what's going to happen, sister, brother? You're going to just not want a cigarette anymore. You're not going to want to commit masturbation and fornication anymore. Because your nature's changed. Your appetite is changing. Your thoughts are changing. Wow! I'm going to take a quick break. Um, as soon as this camera dies, I'm going to switch the batteries out and get right back to this message. Because the next thing we're going to talk about is the glorified body of Jesus Christ. I saved the best for last. <laughs> Lord, I love you so much. I'm just so humbled by this message, Lord. Amazing. 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 Are y'all ready? I'm going to keep preaching until that battery dies. Matter of fact, I ain't even stopping. So, now we're going to move forward to the glorified body. Okay, so now this is exciting, y'all. Because you might not see it. But on the inside, you and I are changing. Our nature is being changed. Our mind is being changed. Christ is becoming the, the president of our body. The mayor of our mind. He is the ruler of our being. So you're only seeing the outward flesh. You're only seeing the last remnant of Adam left on your body. Left in your life. And you know you get discouraged because all you see is this old rugged CD, right? You wish you could just see that spirit man, the beautiful you on the inside, sister, brother. You remember when Stephen was about to be stoned and said he had the face of an angel? At that moment, the spirit of Christ was so glorified in his body that his spirit man was shining on the outside. How amazing is that, huh? Now, this is going to be very fun. We're going to talk about what happened with Christ. We're probably going to do a part two on this video because this is so deep. But I want you to go to the Gospel of John chapter 20, which you should already be there because that's where we left off before the camera died. Chapter 20, verse E. So this is after he died. You know what I'm saying? After he rose from the dead. Look at what it says. In verse 19, it says, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had said, so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Now, pause. What, what is this about? Because the door is shut. Jesus literally appears. He, he literally could walk through a wall. <laughs> this one right here is the glorified body of Christ. And we're also going to talk about our glorified bodies. So what really happened to Jesus Christ when he rose from the dead? We know he ascended up. He had to go immediately into heaven first. He had to apply his blood on the altar in heaven. Nobody could touch Jesus or come near him. He had, no one could touch Jesus. He had to go to heaven first. But when he came back down, something was changed with his body. Are you ready for this? Now remember we said he was the firstborn. Of all the creatures, right? What does this mean? Those that are born again, brother, sister out there. We are of a new race. Beyond the race, a new creation. That's why it's petty to fight over black, white, this, that. We are beyond that now. We are one in Christ, a new creation. What good is the complexion of this flesh that is damned anyways? We have to be born again. 
That's why you can't get caught up in, in racism and prejudice and all of these things, whether it's white, black, it don't matter. Pride in your skin. Oh, when people show pride in their skin, whether it's white pride, black pride, it shows me how immature they are in the spirit. Because this flesh is the enemy anyways. <laughs> so what difference does this enemy look like, whether it's dark or light skin or whatever the case be? So what happened to his body? I want you to go to Luke 24. This is going to blow your mind. Actually, go to John 20 first. You ready for it? We'll go to Luke 24 after this. John 20, okay? We're going to go to verse 11 going down in Jesus' name. But Mary stood without at the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb and sees two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet. And there the body of Jesus had, and where, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said unto her, Woman, why do you weep? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. Notice there's two angels. And notice that the Ark of the Covenant had two angels. <laughs> I ain't going to get into that right now. Look what it says. Ooh. 14. And when they and when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing. But she didn't know that it was Jesus. Now pause. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're gonna love Jesus so much more after this video. That's why I'm just so excited. Please help spread these messages. Glory be to Christ. How is it Mary who walked with Jesus? I mean, she was a very special woman because she was forgiven of much, right? But how could Mary not recognize Jesus? Did he have a mask on? Did he have a long hoodie and couldn't see his face? Absolutely not. Maybe these scholars coming out of these tomb seminaries would say something foolish like that. Because they don't want to believe in the supernatural. These foolish ministries that want to do away with the power of God and say there's no more gifts. There's no more power. What is what is Second Peter chapter three uh, say? They will have a form of godliness but deny the power. From such people, stay away from. They will infect you with doubt. The power of God is real now, and we have seen it. How could she not recognize Jesus? Because his his new glorified body was so supernatural, but yet. It had a physicality to it. Oh, this is so good. Watch this. Watch this. But she didn't know it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why do you weep? Whom do you seek? She, supposing him to be a gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Notice now, she, you know, Mary had a little fight in her. Shout out to my wife. Hallelujah. First, got to shout out to your lady elect of the ministry. I love you, Lioness. And shout out to all of our sisters. Amen. My wife and I love all of y'all sisters. You got to have that fight in you. Amen. Amen. You got to be like, don't you mess with my Lord. Where my Lord at? Amen. But she didn't recognize Jesus. But she assumed him to be a gardener. I find that interesting because in truth, he is a gardener. <laughs> He's a gardener. But she didn't know it was Jesus. The same woman who was in and around the men and in the ministry. She was laboring. She was at, ah, like, are you serious? Watch this. Jesus said unto her, Mary. Why did I move to the mic and say it like that? You're going to catch it in a minute. She turned herself and said unto him, Master, Rabboni, right? Oh, how come as soon as he said her name, she was activated? I want you to do a special prayer in the closet. And I want you to say, Jesus, call my name. 
like you did Mary. You see, the Bible says his sheep will hear his voice. When he called her name, her eyes were opened. Even though it was held from her, there was a veil over her eyes. She couldn't recognize the Son of God in front of her. When he said her name, the veil was, was loosened and she was able to see it's Jesus in his new glorified body. This new supernatural body. Oh, I just want to get to it, but I can't yet. And of course, that's when he said, do not touch me for I am not ascended yet to my father. Remember? So he went up into heaven, applied the blood on the altar and came back down. Oh, this is amazing. Now we're going to go to Luke 24. Remember I told you to hold your, hold your, hold your finger there, right? We're going to go to Luke 24. Eey, where do we go, Lord? I ain't going to lie. I kind of want to. Let's just do verse one. Okay. We haven't, we got to read this. There's no way to skip over this. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the tomb, bringing the spices which were they had prepared, and a certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them shining raiments, garments. And they were sore afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth and said unto them, Why seek you the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke unto you when he was yet, was, when he, when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified. And the third day rise again, basically saying, Jesus Christ must be delivered unto the flesh, the beast. Right, The beast in its wicked nature wanted to kill that holy light. That's the nature of the beast. The darkness can't come. See, darkness dwells in the beast. Light dwells in Christ. So those that are still in the flesh of Adam are those that are not born again. What did I tell you in the image of the beast revealed video? There's only two bodies on the earth. The body of the beast, the body of Adam. The body of the beast is filled with darkness. It can't comprehend the children of Christ because we are the body of Christ filled with light. So the beast nature was to kill the light to the cross. Not knowing doing so would destroy the power of the beast. Amazing. Amazing. Now. Where we at? Okay, hold on. And they remembered his words and returned from the tomb and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. Ten. And it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women that were with them which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales and they believed them not. You imagine that? Imagine that. So don't be discouraged, sister or brother. These men struggled too. They still needed help. There was a transformation going on. Oh, that's good. There was a transformation going on. They, they're not fully glorified yet in Christ, you see. The glory of Christ is a process. Let me, let me say this. Let me say this. <laughs> then arose Peter and ran to the tomb and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothed laid by themselves and departed wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. And behold, two of them went that same day to the village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. Y'all ready for it? And it came to pass that while they were communing together and reasoning, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. <laughs> Let me pay attention. Do you know Jesus is still visiting people right now? What did I tell you earlier about people debate and fight over the, the dumbest things? People will separate and fight and debate over, is it pre-trip, post-trip, mid-trip, rapture? No, that's a lie. Jesus don't come back twice. He comes back once. Jesus is going to and fro the earth all the time. Are you serious? Jesus is visiting. Jesus appeared to Paul. So if he's 
super glued to the right hand of God the Father, how was he able to blind Paul the Apostle? Come on, saints, we need to get out of this box seminary cemetery mind frame. Stop learning the traditions of man and study the word. And pray and get in the presence of God. Maybe God got a mystery for you to see. Stop always reading the footnotes of your Bible. They're not always right. Man. Listen to this. Jesus drew himself near to them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. So they weren't able to recognize him just like Mary did it. What kind of power is this? Wow, what happened to his body? When he died, he broke this. But when he rose from the dead, he became something else. With his body, that is. Because he changes not. But his body. Ah, oh, come on. Come on. Watch this. Their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk in are sad. And one of them whose name was Cleopas answered and said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? And hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? Basically, that's saying like, it's like it's something that's known on the internet. It goes viral like crazy on the gram, whatever. Trending stories. Everybody knew that Jesus Christ was crucified. The man who claimed to be the son of God was put to death, right? The disciples scattered, right? So they're like, where are you? you? How are you not hear about Jesus? So they're talking to Jesus, not realizing it is Jesus. It's because he was in his new glorified body. This is amazing. He has the power to do all supernatural things with this. Now watch this. And he said unto them, what things? And they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed in the in word before God and in all the people. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been, which should have been redeemed Israel and besought all this. Today is the third day since these things were done. Yeah, a certain woman also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the tomb. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. You see this. And a certain of them which were with us went to the tomb and found it even so as the woman had said, but himself they saw not. Now watch this. When he said to them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? <laughs> Jesus is speaking to his disciples who walk with him for three years and they don't even recognize him. Like, I ain't going to front. That like makes me want to weep. I never want to not recognize you, Lord. If you ever, anytime you come to visit me, Lord, I don't ever want you to come visit me by dream or, or in, in a physical manifestation and I don't recognize you. Oh, man. But they didn't recognize him, y'all. Man, I ain't gonna front. That kind of broke me. How many times has he come to see you? Maybe not in a physical body. Maybe not in dream. What about in spirit? He came to wake you up, sister. At three in the morning, he wanted you to go in the closet and worship him. And you just like didn't even pay him no mind. Brother, when he came to commune with you, where were you? Do you even recognize his presence when he comes around? Oh, man. In the beginning, at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in and tarried with them. You know what I love about that? It's like, even though they didn't recognize him, 
There was something in them. Like little children. They knew their father was with them. And even though they didn't recognize him, they didn't want him to leave. They were like little children before him. Like, wow. Do you get that way with Christ? Are you like that when Jesus comes to visit you? Or are you busy about your life? When you're reading the word and Jesus is actually with you, you know he's with us right now. You know that, right? I can feel his presence and I feel like weeping. And I'm like, Lord, don't go. Don't go, Lord. Stay with me a little longer, Lord. Have you ever been that way in the prayer closet where well, you know he shows up because you can feel the presence change in that closet? And you're like, oh, Lord, can't you just be like this all the time? Stay with me like this, Lord. Have you ever been reading your word and you could feel the presence of God enter the room? Now, some of you might be like, he's always with me. Yeah, He's with you a certain way. But you know there's more than one type of presence of God? Do you know that? Do you know that God is with us? But do you know that he can manifest? There's different manifestations of Christ. Some of you might not know that. But they were like, Lord, stay with me. That's what you need to know, sister, brother. Oh, oh, this is so good. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave to them. Notice that as soon as he took the bread, blessed it and gave it to him. That represents the communion, right? His body was broken. Look at what happens next. Their eyes were opened and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. Like, I'm, I can't do this, Lord. Come on. You're going to get Adamites. I call them Adamites. So-called religious people that'll say, Now, he didn't walk through walls. And hit now, they don't know what they're talking about. How did he vanish out of their sight like that if he had a regular body like them? How did he do that? Huh? We're going to get into the scripture where it says that he literally walked through a wall and appeared in the room with them. They were terrified. But yet he can eat fish. <laughs> what? Hold on. Follow me. Come on now. You got to have that supernatural mind for this one. You got to have the spirit mind. Don't be thinking in the flesh. You're not going to get this. Ask God. Say, Lord, give me your mind so I can understand this, Jesus. Watch this, right? And he vanished out of their sight. That don't mean like a smoke bomb went off and he was, <laughs> he just disappeared. Because when Jesus Christ died and resurrected, he broke time and space. He was no longer bound to time. He was no longer bound by time and space. So time and space had no power over him. He could go through walls because this is material. This is a physical object. When he died and rose from the dead, he... <sighs> I'm not yet, not yet, not yet. Look at what it says. Look at what it says. He vanished out of their sight, and they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they arose the, the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the leaven gathered together in them that were with him, with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and had appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in the breaking of bread. And as they spoke, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, peace be unto you. So all of a sudden he appears again. And if you parallel it with John, they're in the room and the door was shut. And we're going to read that in a minute. So it's not like he opened up the door. He just appeared in the room to them. Wow. Wow. Because remember when Jesus Christ was born, he had to be bound by the laws of nature, um, the laws of time and space. Now, not necessarily in the fullness because he transfigured and things like that, but he walked as a man. If he had to go into a house, he walked through the door, right? Because he's in the body of Adam. But when he destroyed the flesh on the cross, he rose from the dead with some new type of flesh. But was it really flesh? We're going to get into that in a minute. So uh, this is such an amazing study. Can you see why this is better than the image of the beast revealed? This is the icing on the beautiful cake. The, the, the uh, manna, right? So let's go ahead. When he said, peace be unto you, 
but they were terrified. What does it mean to be terrified? That's like a whole new level of being afraid because they knew, wait a minute, we've been walking with Jesus for three years. He was a man, although God in the flesh, clearly, but he was a man. He ate, he had to eat, he had to sleep, he had to, you know, he felt hunger pains like a man would. Well, who is, Jesus, what happened to you? You're different. You can just appear, disappear. We didn't even recognize you when you broke the bread. All of a sudden we realized it was you. How, what is this? We were with you for three years. How did we not recognize you? Oh, this is amazing. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. But look what Jesus says. He said unto them, why are you troubled? And why are these thoughts arising in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet. That it is I myself. Handle me. See. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy. And while they yet believed not for joy. And wondered how he said unto them, have you there any meat? You see that? So now Jesus got to go to a whole new level because you got to remember they're warring. Because they're still, <laughs> they're still in the nature of Adam. They ain't truly all born again yet. Book of Acts chapter 2 kicks in later on when they get filled with the Holy Ghost and fire and get new tongues and all of that. But for now, they're getting a piece of it. There's a manifestation going on on the inside. They, he breathed. Uh, watch this now. <laughs> so they're struggling with doubt because the nature of Adam is to doubt. You see, the, the nature of Christ is to believe. So they're struggling. So Jesus is like, oh, here we go. Come on, I'm right here. Look at my flesh and blood. How are you not believing? Look what he says. Have you any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. Wait a minute. Jesus, are you telling me this? Uh, I, I just, uh, probably one of my favorite messages. I can't lie to y'all. Uh. Lord, you are just so amazing. Like, why are people not studying the word? Why do they not want to know you greater? Why are they so fascinated on foolish topics online? You know what? Let me get back to this. Jesus Christ <laughs> can walk through a wall, disappear, vanish, reappear, but yet can eat fish and hold it in his bed. Are you telling me, Jesus, Lord, you can walk through a wall, disappear, reappear, but put some fish in your belly, Lord? <laughs> Done. I can't even handle this. What kind of flesh and blood is this? It clearly ain't the same flesh and blood when you died on the cross. Something changed. Something became glorified. I... Are y'all following what I'm saying? Like how amazing. This, see, this is what these scientists and all, this is why they can't handle the gospel because in their little puny little brain, they're like, this, this doesn't even make sense. I mean, uh, something invisible cannot hold something physical and something literal can't hold it. Blah, 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 blah. They can't, they, their brain will just smoke, come out of their ears. That's because they can only operate and think in this dimension. Jesus Christ is so beyond the understanding, but yet he's so amazing and loving. He wants us to walk with him and teach us his ways and show us his nature. He became, when he rose from the dead, something <laughs> happened. You can appear, reappear, vanish, walk through a wall, but put fish in your belly. That's because he, when he died, it says he spoiled principalities and powers. That means he broke time and space itself. What year are we in right now? 2019. How? Are you telling me Adam and Eve were born in 2019 years ago? No. Jesus Christ. Uh, here it is. Here it is. You ready? Because Jesus was the last Adam, and when he died and broke Adam on the cross, when he rose from the dead, time had to start over. 
This is why no matter how much the Illuminati hates Christ, they have to leave the BC and the AD on the time frame. Huh? Because it is a stamp from God the Father that my son came into the flesh, a body was prepared. My son walked the earth perfect, fulfilled the law, overcoming the law of sin and death, died on a cross, unlawfully persecuted, innocently murdered, died on the cross, gave up his life willfully, but mind you, shed his blood. That's how we overcome by the understanding of what happened and through the washing of the blood and the word of his testimony, our testimony, right? When Jesus Christ died, he ended Adam. So therefore, when he rose from the dead, it was like the beginning of Genesis. Again, a new Adam was created, the son of God, capital S, instead of the lowercase s, who failed. This capital S will not fail. You see the difference. And because of that, time and space started over again. That's why we in 2019 and not 6,000 years or whatever it is. This is amazing. This, this, is, this is beyond... Like, <laughs> it's going to take you to probably watch this video a couple of times. I'm just keeping it real with you. Just keeping it real with you. And remember, when, when Jesus appeared to Mary in John 20, she couldn't recognize him. She thought he was a gardener, which is kind of funny because he is. But she couldn't recognize him either. But as soon as he said, Mary, her eyes were opened and she knew it was him. Again, she was unable to see him for who he was. Then you go to John 21, it happens again. Watch this. Watch this just real quick, real quick. John 21, verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. On the wise showed he himself. There were gathered Simon, Peter, Thomas, Didymus, Nathaniel of Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and the two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I go fishing, man. And they said to him, We also will go with thee. And they went forth and entered into the ship, and immediately that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. See, again, they couldn't recognize him. So if he was in the same form and flesh and body when he rose from the dead, why wouldn't they why wouldn't they recognize him? Because he had a glorified body. And this is how we overcome the image of the beast. We are going to have a glorified body. And what if I told you that the glorification process is already taking place? The fullness will come when Jesus comes. That's why it says when the, when that which is perfect shall come. These foolish Liars, these Galatians, these foolish teachers will tell you the King James Bible is that's what's perfect. And that's what they try to use to prove to you that the power went out with the apostles. They're a bunch of liars. That which is perfect is Christ. That which comes, the perfect that comes is Christ. When he returns, man, look at what it says. He said, and, and the morning was now come. Jesus on the show, but they didn't recognize him, right? Look what he says. Jesus said unto them, children, have you any meat? They answered and said, no. He said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship and you shall find. And they cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw in for the multitude of fishes. So there were so many fishes. Remember, that's what Jesus said in the beginning to them. To Peter and them in the beginning of the, the gospel. He said, man, put your net on the right side. So he was giving them a hint. See, Jesus is awesome. He'll work with you. He'll give you little hints. You phone a friend, like, who wants to be a millionaire? You know, you get to uh, buy a vowel or something, right? <laughs> He'll give you hints to who he is and to help you recognize him. He's very kind, right? But watch this. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved, who is that? John, right? Said unto Peter, it's the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded his fisher's coat unto them, for he was naked. He was down to his underwear because it'd be hot on the boat, y'all. You know what I mean? And he did cast himself into the sea. Now, pause. I'm not going to get into that. Jesus, uh, Peter swims over to Jesus. He's all excited. And finally, he's able to apologize and repent to Jesus. 
Three times Jesus made him say, do you love me? Is because three times he denied Jesus. You see, he had to cancel the curse. Ah, but my point is you want to be like John who recognizes Jesus and you want to be like Peter who joyfully pursues Jesus. You want the best of both. But again, they didn't recognize him until he spoke certain words. That's why the more you speak to Christ, the more he'll speak to you. If you draw to him, he'll draw to you. This, 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 I'm telling you, this is mind blowing. These type of messages, where are they? And I'm not saying it in a cocky way. Some of you, listen, any of y'all try to misunderstand my joy for the Lord as pride? Shame on you. I call myself a servant. How many gospel artists who do music got songs in the album talking about their weaknesses in the Lord? Have you not heard my song, Remember Me? Have you not heard the song Save Me From Myself? I got a new music video coming out called Grace. Right? Don't play with me. I love the Lord. I'm like a child right now in a toy store. This is my joy. I'm not boasting in myself. I just can't help how excited I get for these revelations that it gives me to give to you. And if you can't hand it up, you got a pharisaical mind. No wonder you bitter. No wonder you can't receive a message like this because you're too busy trying to find something wrong with me. Shame on you. But to all my brothers and sisters that are joyful with me, I love you so much. And we're grateful to have y'all with us. I'm just excited, y'all. This is amazing. This revelation, where do you find it? This just happens to be one of the gifts that God has given this ministry. Amen. He shows us mysteries in the word and of Christ. Why, brother? Because we love the Lord. Because we've gone through persecution and pain for Christ. And we get a reward for that. Amen. The question is, are you willing to be persecuted and go through pain to know him? Remember, Paul said that I may know him, who? Jesus. And the fellowship of his sufferings. If The more you want to get closer to Christ, you got to get persecuted. You got to go through things to get closer to Christ. Remember, he's the man of sorrows. I'm not going to get into that. I know we got to bring this together. I got to drop this one on you. The two fathers write that down this is going to eliminate a lot of arguments because you got some people that say well jesus is god but he's not the father right and then you got others that say it's only jesus there is no father son and holy ghost it's jesus only i'm going to show you an amazing mystery amazing revelation are you ready for it all glory to christ there is a father and son. Make no mistakes about it. Even though God is one, people misunderstand this mystery. And for almost 20 years now, I'm in 19-ish years. I don't know the day and the hour like some of y'all. But I'm almost, I'll be 20 years within a year, a year and a half or so. In all my walk, I've gone through seasons. I've worshipped Jesus as the one and true God. And then as I've gotten deeper into the presence, I've come to the, to the truth that Jesus has a God. And that Jesus has a Father. And he's who we, he pointed us to, to worship the Father through Jesus, right? But yet this is a mystery because God the Father calls his son God. Did you know that? If you read Hebrews, it says, And to the Son, he says, Thy throne, O God. <laughs> right? There's all these amazing mysteries. And you get these, these liars online that'll try to tell you, Oh, Jesus ain't the Almighty. Anybody that tells you Jesus ain't the Almighty, mark them, warn them, have nothing to do with them. And they'll go, Well, the Strongs. Yeah, I got the Strongs right here, right? But did you know that Strong's himself admitted, and I got a message that I got I got to put out called The Strong's Delusion. The Strong's is a helpful book, but it's not to be taken to the perfection of, of everything accurate. Even that man himself stated his own words were, look, my book is not meant to be the authentic translation of words. It's supposed to be a foundational help. So a lot of them will try to trick you and discredit you and go, well, if you look up the Strong's, Jesus is not God Almighty. No, you a liar. 
You a liar. And judgment's coming to you for deceiving others. Christ Jesus is beyond what you think he is. The, the Bible says great is the mystery of godliness. This means you got to get into the depths of Christ. You got to worship him. You got to pray in the Holy Ghost. You got to go through years of experience to gain more wisdom and knowledge of who he is. But I'm going to show you the mystery. We have God the Father. We know Elohim. This is what Jesus, Eli, Eli, Lama Shabbatani, right? What did he say on the cross? Why was that word translated? Why was the Hebrew left there? Why was the original language left and read there? There's a mystery. That's another mystery we'll get into another day. Jesus Christ points to God the Father. God the Father points to Jesus Christ. This is amazing. <laughs> oh Lord help me In the beginning was the word And the word was with God And the word was God Let that sink in See Jesus Christ and the Father are one But remember the letter of John says Who is an antichrist But they that deny the Father and the Son So if you just say Jesus only That there is not a Father and Son relationship That's an antichrist doctrine but yet, those that believe in the Father and the Son will deny Jesus as the Father. Yeah, let me show you the mystery. This is years, years, y'all, of in his presence to get what I'm giving to you. And I pray you will not take this word for granted. I'm telling you, be careful how you come to this dinner table. I'm not playing with you and God ain't playing with you. You better show respect to Christ here and you better appreciate his word. Fear God, I'm telling you, and love Jesus with all your heart. Adam technically is our earthly father, right? It's biblical. If we all came from Adam, the original CD, the master copy that produced all the other copies of humans, right? Adam technically was our earthly father, right? In fact, even the, the Pharisees and all the people said, we have Abraham to our father. Read it in Matthew 3, right? And of course, Genesis 17, Abraham's called the father of many nations, right? So how come we're easy to call Abraham our father, but you want to deny Jesus as your father? Oh, we... Why did the guards, why did the Roman guards fall backwards when Jesus said to him, I am he? What kind of power emanated from Christ at that moment? But Adam was our first earthly father. By right, he is, well, not no more, thank God, unless you're not born again. By right, he was actually Literally, DNA-wise, our earthly father. So even though we have God the Father in heaven, before Jesus Christ came to the earth, Adam was all of our earthly father, whether you like him or not. And we love Adam. Come on. Adam himself is not the enemy. It was the flesh, the curse in his flesh that was the enemy. That sin, right? Adam's in heaven. You know that, right? Adam made it in. <laughs> God saved Adam and Eve. Amen. But the curse of Adam, the flesh of Adam, Adam, our, Adam was our earthly father. But yet we still had a heavenly father. Right? Watch where I'm going with this. The mystery is this. Jesus Christ put Adam to the cross. He rose from the dead and was the firstborn of all the creatures. Right? The new creatures, new creation. Is not only the king on the earth. Jesus Coming back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And God in the flesh. That's what Emmanuel means. But what if I told you. That we will worship God the Father. In the spirit. Because remember Jesus is the image of the invisible God. You ready to be liberated? You can avoid all those foolish religious arguments on G who Jesus is. You ready for it? We worship God the Father in the spirit and in truth. But Jesus is the image of God the Father. Watch it. Jesus 
is God the Father in the flesh. But we still have God the Father in the spirit. Do you see it now? You notice how they called Abraham their father? Read it yourself. Notice that Adam was our earthly father. So by default, if Jesus Christ obviously is God in the flesh, and if he is the new Adam, you could say, who was not made of a living soul, but of a quickened spirit. That's why he breathed on the disciples. He was letting them know, I'm your creator. And by default, if he's the creator, he's the father. That's why he said to uh, Philip, Philip said, show us the father and that's good enough for me. Jesus says, how long have I been with you and you don't know me, Philip? Let me, let me explain to you. God the father lives in Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ lives in God the Father. Remember, it says in Revelation that the Lamb and God dwell together, right? Now watch this. Jesus Christ is God the Father in the flesh. He's our earthly Father. Y Yahweh, Elohim, God the Father, is our heavenly Father in the Spirit, Okay, I see we got to go deeper with this. If you, ladies, I'm not excluding you, but for y'all men, or women too, sisters, you notice for y'all that have sons, you be like, man, you just like your father. Some of y'all can see your husband all up in your son's face. You can see your husband in his character. He does certain things that remind you of your husband. Or well, let's keep it real. Some of y'all sisters, you know, you had children in the world. You're not married, but your children, your sons still remind you of your baby daddy, right? How much greater is Jesus the image of his father? He's got the face of his father. He's got the character of his father. He got the personality of his father. But the difference is this. Oh, I love this. I can feel the fire of God on me. I, I'm going to have to go soon, y'all. I don't know how much more I can handle it is. In the earthly realm, our sons are not exactly us, but they're us. They have our flesh. They have our DNA. They've took upon some of our traits, our characters, our likes, our dislikes, but they're not perfectly us. You understand? With Jesus, he's perfectly his father's spitting image, you could say. Remember when he spit in the mud and he smeared it? You ever heard that terminology? That is his spitting image of his father. Jesus is the perfect spitting image of his I can't. Lord, I, I'm going to have to do a part two of this. I can't, y'all. I got to go. I'm just being honest with you. I just want to worship God right now. Jesus is the perfect spitting image of his father, which means he is the father in the flesh because he's exactly the father. Remember, when he was on the earth, before he was fully glorified, he was the perfect humble servant. That's why he prayed to the Father. That's why he pointed to the Father. That's why he said, why you call me good? The only good is God. Why? Even though he was God in the flesh, if he's going to be a perfect, humble servant, he's going to point to God, even though by rights he could have been called good. Are you going to tell me Jesus wasn't good? Some of these scholars who think they know something know nothing about Christ. That's the only reason. Why he did what he did. He rolled in on a donkey, not a horse. He washed our feet. Think about that. Anything Jesus does, he's going to do it perfectly. If he brings wrath, when he does, it'll be perfect wrath. That's terrifying, by the way. When he judges, it'll be perfect judgment. So by default, when he came as a humble servant, he was perfectly humble. And if he's perfectly humble, he wants nothing for himself. All glory he wants to give to the Father. Do you see it now? So it didn't mean he wasn't God. It didn't mean he wasn't the Father. It didn't mean none of that. He just pointed to the Father because to be a perfect, humble man, you have to deflect all worship to you went to the Father. All glory to you went to the Father. That's how it was. When the three, when the wise men worshiped Jesus, that worship hit Jesus but bounced off him and went to God the Father. It went to God the Father. Jesus was like a mirror. Everything we gave to Jesus in honor, he just points it at God the Father and says, no, give it to my Father. And you know what God the Father says? Give it to my Son. 
That's how much they love each other. I it's just like I'm so sad right now in my spirit. I can't front. Not the sad that you would think, because I'm joyful right now. But how many people don't know this mystery? And I feel so sorry for those who reject the father and son faith because they, they're so deceived by Jesus only because they want to worship Jesus as the father. You can worship Jesus as the father. He's the earthly father in this new glorified flesh and bone body. It's a flesh and bone spirit body. I mean, how does that even make any wisdom? How does that even sound correct? But it is. Don't deny him as the father, but don't deny the father and son either. The mystery that Satan don't want you to know is both have truth. Both have truth. Adam, Abraham too, but Adam was our earthly father because everything in us came from Adam. Our flesh, our, our, our sinful nature, all of that came from Adam. So you and I, when we are now in, in the new creation, we're born again. Not of the flesh, but of the spirit now. Now we have a new father in the earth. Jesus is our earthly father. And we worship God the father in the spirit. He is the perfect spitting image of his father. That's why when you see Jesus, you see his father because he is exactly his father. He thinks exactly like his father. In this glorified body. When he was on the earth, there were still things that were withholding from him. There were certain things he could do and certain things he was not able to do. Not because he couldn't do them, but they were deliberately held from him because he had to manifest the glory of God through suffering. Remember what Hebrew says, he was tempted in every way. Why? Because even though he was fully God, he walked as full man. Oh, that's, I, I can't, yeah, I, I gotta go. I gotta go. 1 Corinthians 15. Let's go. We got to wrap this up. 1 Corinthians 15. We're going to go to verse 49. And as we have been born the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Do you see that? We were born in the image of Adam, our earthly father. Now we're born again in the image of Christ, our heavenly father. Wow. Wow. Our Heavenly Father made flesh. But I want you to see something now. It's taking a lot. And I'm not deliberately trying to hold back tears. But I'm telling you right now. I can feel tears. Because it's tears of joy. But it's also tears of sorrow for those who deny the truth of the, the real organic gospel doctrine. Wow. Wow. Thirty-seven going down, but that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain. It may chance of wheat or some other grain, but God giveth it a body as it had pleased Him, and to every seed is sown, every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beast. Another flesh of fishes and another of birds. You see this? This is why well, I told you in the image of the beast exposed that man and beast were in the same sentence because even though we're not a cow, we're not a pig, we're not a real dog, we took on the image of the beast, right? Thank God, not no more. But look what it says. And another of birds, there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of celestial is one and the glory of terrestrial is another. You ever heard the term extraterrestrial when they're talking about aliens, right? But there's no such thing as aliens. They're either holy angels or fallen angels or ministering spirits or demonic spirits. Wow. But look at this. 
It says, There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. So also in the resurrection of the dead, it is sown in corruption, it is risen, it is raised in incorruption. So Jesus was sown as Adam, died on the cross, put that corruption to the death of the cross. He rose from the dead in incorruption. Isn't that amazing? Look at this. He he finished Adam off at the cross. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. Not the literal Adam. The flesh of Adam. The curse of Adam. The beast of Adam. Ah! Look at this. Look at this. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Right? It's, it, it, Jesus was given a fleshy body. I mean, are you kidding me? The Almighty of Heaven and Earth had to go in some body that sweated. He had to bathe. He had to go to the bathroom. Imagine that. God had to use the toilet. Some of you are like, oh, blasphemy. Why? He had, Jesus was a man. <laughs> but he was God Almighty. So he had to go in that. You think it was pleasing? Yeah, he was joyful to go to the cross and do what he had to do. But you think it was, you know... Imagine you're used to driving the most luxurious car and then you got to go into a beat up hoopty, gas leaking, stank interior, busted radio. Jesus had to go into a body. Listen to this. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. You, you, you see that? Paul is trying to tell us Jesus was sown a natural body. He died and went into the earth like a seed, but he grew out of the earth a spiritual body. This is that new body he has where he can go in and out of walls, appear, disappear, but yet take a piece of salmon and eat it. Wow. Amazing. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickened spirit. Howbeit that was not the first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. Afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. You see this. And as the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as in the heavenly, such are they that are heavenly. And we have borne the image of the earthy, but we also shall bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. Now pause right there, because we're, we're bringing the, all this together, right? Now you can see why, because technically... <laughs> It's amazing I'm still on this message with y'all. I want to go through some scriptures about the glorified bodies, and then we got to wrap up and pray, okay? I want you to go to Philippians. We got to be quick, y'all. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. It says in Jesus' name, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. You see this? According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things to himself. So right now we're changing. This vile, nasty body. Keep it real, sister. If you don't put on deodorant, sister, what you going to smell like during work? <laughs> You're going to be in the bathroom with water and paper towels. Trying to walk like this for the rest of the day, huh? Brother, what's going to happen if you don't bathe for a week? This nasty, vile body. Think of all the nastiness. Sounds coming from the gut. You burp. You fart. You, you got to take a dump. You urinate every day. You got to shower. Armpits be cut, smelling like cut onions. Some of y'all need to bathe more often. Amen. Cleansliness. Come on now. But it's a vile body. But look what it said. It says here. Now, let's, let's go back to it. Three... 21, who shall change our vile, nasty, Adamite body, right? This Adamic body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. So on the inside, Jesus is already preparing. See, when he said he went to go prepare a place, the mystery is he's also preparing inside of us. He's expanding his foundation. He's growing. He's glorifying himself in us. You see how Jesus said, Father, bring glory to thy name. He was saying, Father, glorify yourself in me. 
the father was glorifying himself in Christ. That's why the power was so strong right before his death when the guards fell back. <laughs> Jesus' flesh was breaking because of the glory of God the Father. Ay, ay, ay. Because of the glory of God the Father in him, his flesh was literally breaking. He was sweating drops like blood. It was time to go to the cross. Hallelujah. But he's growing on the inside. He is, he is already manifesting his glory. We're changing on the inside. It won't be long, brothers and sisters. This is how we're able to do the supernatural. Right now, you and I can do supernatural things. And just so you know, I'm not going to act all super duper humble. There is supernatural things happening in this ministry. And we got tons of people that can testify. And guess who gets all the glory? Jesus Christ. In this ministry, we don't lift up me, lioness, or any other man or woman. We lift up Jesus Christ here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Check this out, though. First John chapter 3. Come on, we got to be quick, y'all. We got to be quick. You know what I'm saying? First John chapter 3. Let's get it. Hold on. First John chapter 3. Verse A, verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Wow, you see that? That which is perfect shall come. That's what the scripture means. We shall be fully glorified. Right now, we're being glorified. The glory of God is changing us on the inside. But there's going to come a time where everything changes. This too. This too will change. Like, See how Jesus had a regular human body? He took on the DNA, the atoms of Adam, the A-T-O-M of A-D-A-M. And he broke it. Right? We will become the new creation in its fullness. Wow. I want you to go to Colossians chapter 3. Watch this. Colossians 3, verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication and cleansliness. Why is he now? Now you see the mystery. He's letting us know. What? Let's say it again now. Actually, nah, we got to read verse. Ooh. Hold on, we, we got to read verse 1. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the throne, uh, uh, sitteth at the right hand of God. See, the right hand means power. It's beyond what you think it is. Set your affections on the things above, not on the things on the earth. For you are, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then you also shall appear with him in glory. That's why you mortify your members now. He's saying, kill off Adam. Just how Christ killed off Adam, you got to also carry your own cross to kill off the beast in your life. To kill off the Adamic nature in your life. To destroy Adam, your earthly father, remove him, and receive Christ, your now eternal earthly father. Because remember, Jesus Christ forever will rule, listen to me now, he will walk the earth in a physical body as God the Father in the flesh. He will be the ambassador of his Father. He, he will be the physical image of his invisible Father. Wow! <laughs> That's why if you read Matthew 22, Jesus says that the sons of God are like the angels. Why? We're not the same, you know, but we're like the angels. There's a great mystery here, right? But go to Romans 8. I want to show you something else quickly now. We got to wrap this up so we can get the prayer in. Romans chapter 8, verses 15 going down. Yeah, 15 going. This is heavy now. Check this out. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if the children, then heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. There's that word glorified, that glorified body. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed to us. Just take a pause right now. Sister. 
brother, all the things you go through now, the hard times in this cold, adamic, cursed world, right? The persecution you go through. That stuff ain't even worthy to be compared to when you're in Christ and he's in you as he is in the Father and the Father is in him. When you have your new glorified body, do you know you're going to be able to fly through the, through the heavens? What some know as galaxies, that's just the outer layer. You're going to be able to travel through the ends of heavens and which never end, really. You're going to be able to do supernatural things with your new body. Hold on, sister. Hold on, brother. Don't give up. Fight the Adamic nature. Kill off that beast and start to allow the glory of Christ to grow in you, to change you from the inside. You're changing. Trust me. Oh, that's good. That's good. Hold on a minute. Man, I be, you know what, man? I, I be trying to hook y'all up with some parables. I got some fish on the, that better not defrost. You know what I'm saying? You Lioness could cook a serious salmon. You should try her fish. She is off the hook with her fish. You see this right here? If you weren't trying to eat this egg, right? I just want you to see this. It's going to help you have more faith and encourage you. In Jesus' name, I speak it into life. If you were a egg, right? And the hen or the chicken, whatever it is, is sitting on you. On the outside, it looks like nothing's happening. It always looks the same. Oh, this is so good. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this parable. This egg looks the same, right? Not knowing on the inside, you're actually changing. See, on the outside, you look the same. Every day you wake up, you feel like nothing's happening. But on the inside, the yolk is starting to change and look like a chicken. It's growing feathers. And one day, you're going to peck through the flesh. You're going to, with the beak, and you're going to break out of this. And you're going to be so humbled. You're going to feel like, man, I was acting like an idiot. This whole time, I was so focused on the shell, which represents the flesh or Adam's, the curse of Adam, the beast, right? But on the inside, Jesus was actually forming me. I just didn't know it. Wow, that's so good. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So here we are. We're reading Romans. What, what verse are we at? I even forgot. Okay, 18 again. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. You see that? For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature... Itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious freedom and liberty of the children of God. You see that corruption again, that flesh of Adam. For we know that the whole creation groan and travail and pain together unto now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what man seeth, what hope does he yet hope for? But if we hope for that which we see not, then we do with patience wait for it. See, you can't see the chicken growing in the egg. Now, unfortunately, this is going to end up being an omelet at some point for me. Can I get a name, man? But if in reality, if this was meant to be an actual living chicken... You wouldn't know on the outside. You would have to walk by faith and believe that even though you can't see through the shell, something is changing. So this flesh, even though you can't see your spirit, man, you're changing, sister. You're changing, brother. If you're... Oh! Oh, come on, Lord. Why you do this to me right now? Remember what Jesus said? He said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. If only you would know who I am, I would have gathered you like a hen does her chicks. I can't. I'm, 
Oh, Lord, I love you so much. Like, come on, Lord. I got to go, y'all. I've been saying that for an hour. So we like the eggs, you know what I mean? We get, in the, we get discouraged because all we see is the shell. We like, man, I'm still whack, man. I'm not saved. But on the inside, you becoming born again. You're forming into a chicken under the hen. You know what I'm saying? So, okay, how about we make a deal because of the time? Read the rest of Romans 8 and see the mysteries. There's so much good stuff here. I don't even want to stop reading. I'll be real with you. Man, but just please read it. Just just read it. Uh, man, I kind of don't want to stop reading it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop it. You read it because you're going to find mysteries in there. It's going to be amazing. Go to 2 Thessalonians quickly. Just because we got to wrap this up now. 2 Thessalonians. Your level of growth will be de determined if you like this video greater than the Image of the Beast Reveals video. It'll show where your level of, where Christ is at. I'm being real. And please give this video to as many people as you can. And um, yeah, just get in it. Second Thessalonians. Okay, we're going to go to chapter 1. Look at what it says now. Verse 10. For whoremongers and them that are defiled themselves with mankind, men stealers, liars, Perjured persons, if there be any other thing that contrary to sound doctrine, what? Oh, sorry. So, Second Thess Second Thessalonians, chapter one. Look at what it says in verse ten. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. You see this now. Now you start to see it. What he did on the cross, what did he destroy, and what now is he made change, right? I want you to go to 2 Corinthians 3, just quick. 2 Corinthians 3, come on. Chapter 18. But we all, with an open face, beholding as it is in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. See, we're changing. This is a process here, y'all. This is this is no game here. Man. You know what? We're going we gonna to stop right there. I have one more nugget I want to give to you before we read. This is amazing. And once again, you got prideful white people that get pride in their skin. You got prideful black people that get pride in their skin. White and black are not even the proper term terms anyways, right? But you get my point. You get all nations proud of their skin. They want to argue over what color Jesus is and all of this. And we know he got to be a certain color. I mean, let's keep it real. And we know the physical Jesus that ruled the earth, that walked the earth definitely wasn't white. But I know that he loves me, and I know he died for me, just like he died for you. And um, I wanted to show you something. In Revelation, this is amazing because John, the disciple in whom Jesus loved, think about that. He was the closest disciple to Jesus, but yet he he's so terrified when Jesus shows up to him. Because remember, Jesus' glory goes from glory to glory. So even the glory of his being is still manifested. Did you know that? Right now, 2,000 years later, the glory of Jesus is getting bigger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger forever. That's why the angels can't handle it. They cover their face and holy, 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 the Bible says. They fly around the most high because he goes, he just keeps becoming, he just doesn't stop. He's so amazing. I know, y'all, this is meaty messes, for real. But I want to show you this, and then we're going to pray. John, verse 12, And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about a patch with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. 
and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice was a sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp to his sword, and the countenance was like that of the sun shining in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand on me, and said to me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. This is Jesus, yes? I'm not saying, I definitely agree that brass is a brown tone, right? I mean, y'all know I preach the message called the white Jesus. I, I prove that Jesus wasn't white, but I make a declaration in that video too. I, I didn't do that to earn points, you know what I mean, uh, with non-white people. I'm cool, you know what I'm saying? I don't need to kiss up to no race of people. Whether it's white, Asiatic, African, you know what I'm saying? Latino makes no difference. I'm supposed to love everyone, right? It makes no difference. I love everyone. This is the point I want to prove here. While people fight over simply what color he was and what his hair looked like, the mature believers are beyond that, whether they white or black. The mature believers, and hopefully that's you at my at the dinner table, we look at the fact that he's glorified. It's beyond just his skin color and his hair. Did you not see in the spirit how John fell as a dead man? Jesus is in this glorified body. Okay, let's wrap up. I want you to say this with me. First, let's say this, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for such a amazing meal. I have such a greater appreciation for you. How awesome are these revelations that you have given your servant to give to me. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins and wash us in your blood. Don't let the devil take any of these seeds, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, the same way God the Father dwells in you and you dwell in God the Father, please, Lord Jesus, dwell in me and I in you. Lord, I want to mortify my members and overcome the image of the beast by receiving your death, burial, and resurrection in the gospel by getting washed in your blood and overcoming by testifying that you died and rose from the dead and you have a new glorified spirit body. You can walk through walls, but yet put fish in your belly. <laughs> Lord, turn me into the supernatural now. I remember, Lord, in the book of Acts, when Philip baptized that blessed Ethiopian, you supernaturally transported him somewhere. Far away, miles away. Supernaturally you did it. Supernaturally Paul blinded the false prophet. Supernaturally they broke the chains and the shackles. Supernaturally Peter was able to walk by all the guards and not even, they weren't even able to wake up or see him. Supernaturally, they were able to cast out devils and raise the dead. Why, Lord? Because on the inside, they were manifested sons of God. The Son of God was enthroned in them and glorifying on the inside of them. Supernaturally, Stephen's face shone. And had the face of an angel. Supernaturally, Peter could speak in Acts chapter 2 and 1 and speak to the people. And his voice was heard loud and clear without a speaker and a microphone. Supernaturally, when the disciples and the men and women prayed, the foundation shook where they were at. Supernaturally, the two witnesses in the book of Revelation will speak fire and stop raining. How were they able to do this? Lord, 
glorify yourself in me. Remove and destroy the nature of Adam in me, the nature of the beast. I put it to death right now. Say this, saints. I willfully put my flesh to the cross. I mortify my members by killing them off. Jesus, you told me to deny myself and carry my cross. Now I'm at Golgotha in the spirit, Lord, and I'm meeting you, Lord. I'm with you. As you put the flesh to the cross, I believe that I was put there with you. And that when I died with you, Lord, when you died, I died. Supernaturally. And when you rose from the dead, I rose with you. Because now I'm outside of time and space. Jesus Christ, bring glory to the Father in me. Father, bring glory to your Son in me. Holy Ghost, I love you. I want to pray in you, Holy Ghost, right now. I cut down the nature of the beast and the nature of Adam, and I receive the divine nature of Christ. Lord, change the way I think. Change my habits. Change everything about me to be made into the image of Christ and no longer the image of the beast or the flesh. I renounce Adam as my earthly father. And I declare that Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah, Emmanuel, is my earthly father. I declare that he is the greater Adam, the greater father, who out of Christ, death, burial, and resurrection will come many people like Abraham was the father of many nations. Jesus is the father, the earthly father of many who receive him. And Jesus Christ, I worship you in the flesh as my father in the flesh to the glory of God the Father and the Spirit. Wow. I declare and decree that I am a new creature and that as this egg, I still may have the shell, this flesh, but I am changing on the inside and I will not allow the enemy to discourage me because now I know that you are glorifying and expanding on the inside of me. And every day I'm changing. And what I'm still attached to now, I know that you will do away with it. You will break those addictions. You will break that lust, break that pride, that bitterness, that unforgiveness. Whatever it is, you will break it as I stay in your presence and my nature changes. Give me the nature of Christ, Father. I want your son's nature. I receive it now by faith. My life will never be the same. I have overcome the beast, the image of the beast, and the antichrist spirit because I now have the son of God glorifying himself in me as a temple. And the enemy is not allowed here. My members are mortified. I am dying to self daily. And every day I wake up, I know that I am no longer the son of Adam, but I am a manifested son of God. I am a manifested child in Christ. And he is in me. As he is in the Father and the Father is in him, I am in you and you are in me. Jesus, bring glory to your name in me. Use me in this last hour. Bring me into the supernatural realm. Everything you did, you said in John, I could do greater. If you can appear and reappear, why can't I? Lord Jesus Christ, if you can walk on water, Peter was able to walk on water. How much more? What can I do now that your dead, burial, and resurrection has come to pass? Far much greater things can we do, Lord. Raise up your remnant of manifested sons of God who believe in the power, who know that's a lie from the pit of hell, that the gifts have not ceased. The Holy Ghost is still here with power, still operating in the bride of Christ. As I prepare for your return. And on that day when you return. I shall be changed. And complete in you. But for now Lord. I, I see in part. And I operate in part. And I'm grateful for what I'm able to do in you. I love you Jesus Christ. I renounce the beast. I renounce the image of Adam. And the image of the beast. I renounce the antichrist spirit. I reject the world. And the love of the world. 
And as I'm in the world, I will not be of the world. I receive Christ as my image. There it is. Here's the victory, saints. I receive Christ as my image. I receive Christ as my faith. I receive Christ as my righteousness. I receive Christ as the glory growing on the inside of me. I receive the nature of Christ right now. I speak in faith. I speak it into life. I call things that are not, that are not as though they were, that Jesus is growing on the inside of me. That every day will be a step forward from glory to glory as I await his return to be complete in him. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. <laughs> oh, look it. I love you. Don't take this, this ministry for granted. And above that, don't take Christ for granted. I'm laboring. It is now 6.30 in the morning. Just so you know that. I still got to edit this video. I got to put it together. I got to pray over it with my blessed wife, my beautiful family, praying for you. We love you and we labor for you. But are you helping? Are you doing your part? Are you praying for us? Do you help this ministry grow? Or are you sneaking like Nicodemus? Are you ashamed because of our boldness? Is it outside of your comfort zone? I've given my life to Christ. My wife has given her life to Christ. And we have dedicated to full-time feeding you. Returning emails and phone calls. And, and I keep it real with you. How could I do that all day long? I still got to be a family man, a husband, a father. I still got to have personal time with the Lord. We still got to do street ministry. We still got to do um, ministry back in, in Kenya and Africa. Think of all that we do in the ministry because we love you. And it's because of Christ in us that loves you. All I'm asking is don't take these dinner table messages. Don't take Christ and what he does through us for granted. That's all I'm asking. Show your gratitude by your actions, by living for him, by loving him. Take this message and watch it again. Take the notes, meditate on it. And live the life you're supposed to live in him. And we love y'all so, so much. I got so much grace on me right now. I could just rest in God right now. I'm so humbled by this amazing message. And if it was hard for some of you to understand, don't be discouraged. This is meat. If you barely have teeth in the spirit, you're still having milk. Go to some of the other messages that I told you about. Come back when your teeth are more grown in the spirit. You can chew this. For y'all that are mature, that are just so joyful from this message. Amen. Amen. Another beautiful moment at the dinner table. I got to go, y'all. I got to go. We'll see you soon. Be on the lookout for more documentaries. A music video called Grace coming out. Don't miss it. One of the best songs God has ever given me. There's no... I'm, I'm, not, um, I'm not doing rap format. It's all singing. Um, Lioness got some songs coming, more documentaries, like I said, uh, more just other types of videos, dinner table messages, Lord willing, and we love y'all so much. In Jesus Christ's name, Father, don't let the enemy take the seed out of them. May their life never be the same. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Bless. I know something you don't know about the devil I know something that people need to know His ears are the phone and his eyes are the TV How many people die on it weekly Every time I wake up them try to deceive me But I found Christ that will cry when you see me And to the time when they fall in Babylon Close your eyes and all that is dead and gone That's when you find Find out all that was said is wrong His brain was London and his heart was a Vatican